as a man, being emotionally stable is the most important thing a woman could require from a man. Emotion is, emotional stability is the most attractive quality that a man can show because emotional stability doesn't, doesn't mean that you're not crazy. It means that you're able to think long term. It means that you're able to devise a plan and execute it. It means that you don't let your desires, your hedonistic drive, distract you from your purpose. Because when you as a man cannot control your emotions, we, because that's usually a lack of emotional intelligence, you end up losing your purpose because a woman is not giving you attention. You end up trading the most important thing, which is finding your purpose in life, making money, building, your, building a life of abundance, all for some short-term scrappy validation. And a woman can sense when your value system is skewed like that, and they run from that. Men who have emotional stability usually have a long-term plan. Usually do not let women control their emotions. It pretty much comes down to what Robert Greene calls having the grand strategy. Being able to think long-term and prioritize the long-term and use that long-term goal to make to to inform your decisions for the short term look what robert green says about this grand strategy is a function of vision of seeing further in time and space than the enemy does the process of foresight is unnatural we can only ever live in the present which is the ground for our consciousness and, and our subjective experiences and desires narrow the scope of our vision, vision. They, like they are like a prison, a prison that we inhabit, inhabit. Your task as a grand strategist is to force yourself to widen your view, to take in more of the world around you, to see things for what they are and for how they may play out in the future, not for how you wish them to be. So you can see how emotional stability is the number one most important thing that will lead to success with the opposite sex, bar none, without a doubt. Because when you have emotional stability, it radiates from within. When you have emotional intelligence, it radiates in your mannerisms, the way you talk, the way you move, the way you react to her. And you have almost like a stabilizing force on a woman. You have the ability to calm her down. And that type of presence is power. It's attractive in a woman's mind. All of these studies that you see are studies that that show that emotional stability is the number one thing that leads to long-term relationships, marriage, and, and being happy with a partner. And unfortunately, you could assume that the opposite is a lack of emotional stability that usually leads to a lot of shitty short-term relationships. Or if you're dumb enough, you could stay in those relationships and you could have a shitty long-term relationship. And today we're going to talk about how emotional intelligence changes the way a woman perceives a man. The first thing is that you become a man of higher value. Every man who's able to control the, his emotions and who has a goal of attracting high quality women, when you have emotional intelligence, the plans that come from that type of mindset leads to the results that you have in your mind. You're going to come to the right conclusions because unfortunately people, the people who succeed have high levels of emotional intelligence. There's no other way around it. Every guy who is attractive, either he's an asshole, a manipulator, whatever, all of those guys have a high level of emotional intelligence because they have control over themselves. Every boss guy, every CEO possesses that. Every alpha male possesses those qualities. Emotional stability will predict how stable the relationship is. Emotional stability will predict how long you guys stay together because when you have when you have emotional intelligence women will gravitate to you not just because of the high value lifestyle you might have but because of your presence you have a calming soothing presence and you develop that by first finding a way of how to develop inner peace people like the buddha was fucking right if you're able to emanate inner peace you're gonna attract the hoes like maybe the buddha didn't say that specifically but every time, what I've noticed in my life is that the more at peace I became, the more comfortable women got, um, the more comfortable women were around me. Women just want to be comfortable around you. If they're able to be comfortable around you and they spend enough time with you, they will fall in love with you. It's how that works. It's how you see ugly dudes with pretty women. They spent long enough time 
for her to fall for her, for them. In a world of chaos, they appear. With hearts ablaze, calm and clear, emotionally intelligent, they possess the power to soothe, to bring redress. With a gentle touch and compassionate gaze, they navigate emotion's turbulent maze. Their presence, like a soothing balm, brings solace, restores a sense of calm. They listen deeply without judgment or blame, creating a sacred space free from shame. With empathy's embrace, they understand and guide lost souls with a tender hand. Their words are gentle, wisdom imbued, easing troubled minds, lifting the mood. Through understanding, they impart a sense of peace, a tranquil heart. With patience and grace, they lend an ear, allowing emotions to be released, sincere. In their presence, anxieties recede as they nurture healing, plant a seed. Emotionally intelligent, they hold the key to unlocking serenity, setting minds free. Their calming aura, a beacon of light, guiding others through darkest night. So let us learn from these empathetic few and cultivate emotional intelligence too. With presence and compassion, we'll find a world where calmness is redefined. Just your presence relaxes me. Because we as humans, we connect emotionally through sensing and, and, and mirroring how you're feeling. If you're feeling stressed out, that emotional state is going to make me feel stressed out. If you're not emotionally intelligent, you're going to make me less emotionally intelligent. But your emotional intelligence, which comes with calmness, with a sense of rationality, with a sense of emotional stability, stabilizes me. And any woman who's actually looking for a man, not a boy, not just, but a woman who really wants to fall in love and stay in your life, they, she will gravitate to that because you're going to become an oasis of positive emotions. It's almost like you are allowing her to project a father figure. And guys, I'm sorry, but women, women like guys who have a certain father figure quality to them. And most women re, um, project a father, like they create almost like a projection of a father where, they, where they'll trust you, they'll be relaxed around you whenever you become more relaxed. Nothing is more unattractive to a woman than a man who's jittery, than a man with a lot of nervous, tense energy. The next thing is that whenever you are emotionally stable, you don't get baited into chasing the other person. Because whenever you are not emotionally stable, you tend to fall in love with the wrong person. You tend to push people away with your neediness. You tend to over pursue the opposite sex a little bit too much. And that tends to sabotage you. But whenever you have emotional intelligence, you're able to see how you're coming across. You're able to sense when you're looking a little bit too desperate with your actions and you're, and you're able to withhold and pull back a little bit more. Because whenever we're always, whenever we're people who chase a lot, whenever you're somebody who chases a lot, a lot of the times it just means you're looking for some emotional stability through chasing. It's plain and simple. You're looking to, you're looking to relax through the person's validation. And you, and a lot of us, the solution for that is chasing because you usually chase from a place of insecurity. You usually chase from a place of uncertainty. So you chase to find certainty. Emotional intelligence comes from the certainty of knowing that you are grounded, from knowing that your self-love is enough. And a lot of us do not have the self-love to stop ourselves from, from over-pursuing someone who's not treating us right. And you can develop that self-love through meditation. And I'll tell you, if you guys ever want to develop self-love, practice love and kindness meditation. Practice love and kindness. That is the, I, I, like, I, I don't know how many times to say this, that's like the ultimate self-esteem boost. Based on several studies, it has been found that love and kindness meditation can have a positive impact on self-esteem. One study showed that practicing loving kindness meditation for just a few minutes increased feelings of social connection and connectedness with oneself. This sense of connection and self-compassion contributes to an overall boost in self-esteem. Another study focused on individuals with post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, and found that loving-kindness meditation not only increased self-compassion, but also led to a significant improvement in self-esteem over time. Additionally, the practice of loving-kindness meditation has been linked to increased happiness and self-esteem as well as improved compassion, resilience, and patient care among healthcare providers. These findings suggest that by cultivating feelings of love, kindness, and compassion towards oneself and others through meditation, 
individuals can enhance their self-esteem and overall well-being. You either could do that or check out my course, Emotional Mastery, which I, I always talk about. It's my latest course. Well, it's not my latest course. My latest course, The Charisma Blueprint, which is a course that I made to, to teach you how to develop charisma through inner charisma, through radiating charisma and outer charisma, through manufacturing charisma, how, how celebrities do. You can purchase that course on the description down below. You can pre-order it right now. But the course before that that I did was Emotional Mastery, which is a six-week course on how to develop emotional stability. And in that course, I would teach you different meditation methods. You you join the WhatsApp group where everyone is encouraging each other to a little community to that would that that where they are practicing the things in that course. So yeah, they don't let you chase. So when you're not, when you're someone that doesn't chase despite feeling needy, your partner will respect that. You might, you might frustrate them because you're not chasing them, but they will respect a person who does not chase, who does not chase from a place of neediness. You're showing them that you have character. You're showing them that you have a strong sense of self and that is attractive but also by you having emotional intelligence you don't develop those needy habits of chasing because it is a habit to chase people the next thing is that you see reality clearly and you as a man if you consistently get rejected by women if you have bad experiences you're going to project aggression you're going to project rejection you're going to project an anticipation for what you've gotten in the past and a lot of the times, if we allow ourselves to get bitter because of women's bullshit, because I understand, guys, women could be women could just annoy the living fuck out of you. I get it. But if you allow their bullshit to be internalized in your system, you're gonna start creating that reaction in women, and you're gonna and you're gonna you're gonna encounter women who are just more aggressive, more mean towards you and the truth is is that that's not being in touch with reality because women are not like that we're just allowing we're we're taking rejection so personal that it's distorting our reality and the way to heal from that is through a practice of meditation people but it's this is not that's just one aspect of not seeing reality whenever you see reality clearly you don't get paranoid because the person is hasn't texted you in a few days right you, you, you don't get paranoid because he, this person hasn't validated you. People can sense when, 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 you, when you see through their bullshit. When you have emotional intelligence, you don't let people manipulate you. They'll see, because one of the most unattractive traits is gullible people. Humans may not necessarily respect gullible people because gullibility can be seen as a disadvantageous trait in terms of survival and reproductive success. Evolutionary theory suggests that traits beneficial for survival and reproduction tend to be favored and passed on to future generations. Gullibility, which can involve easily being deceived or manipulated, may make individuals more vulnerable to exploitation or harm. In ancestral environments where resources were scarce and competition was high, it would have been advantageous to be discerning and cautious to ensure survival and successful reproduction. Therefore, individuals who were more skeptical and less gullible may have had greater fitness and over time, this preference for skepticism and caution could have become ingrained in our social structures and behaviors. Whenever you're gullible, people cannot respect that. It's like a guy who doesn't realize a woman is playing games with them. A lot of these women would just fuck with you sometimes because they're bored. They just do that. And whenever you let a woman fuck with you, waste your time. She's going to see you as gullible. She's going to say, this guy wants poom poom so badly. He's able to, he, he lets me fool him. Women just, women don't respect men to do that. So emotional intelligence tends to increase your, your ability to think rationally, which naturally makes you less gullible, which naturally makes you less accessible to manipulation. People respect people who can be manipulated. People respect people who think for themselves. And unfortunately, when you're, when you're too emotional, you easily get manipulated, you easily get too emotional, and you easily start, start doing things that turns a person off, all because you can't control yourself. Like, you can say that looks is the most important thing, and I do believe that, at least initially, but being able to control your emotions is honestly the most important thing long term. When you can control your emotions, you get respect from everyone. Everyone will feel a, de a desire to respect you. 
oh, be, because it's an it, it's an important trait to have people in our lives who have emotional intelligence. You can only win from that. For example, when you develop emotional intelligence, you develop a fingertip feel for knowing when to talk, when not to talk, when to act, when not to act, when to flirt, when not to flirt. You're able to read the room a little bit better. That is a like that trait is so important for guys because guys, a lot of the times, women tell me this is that what makes a guy, what makes a guy lose a woman is that he talks himself out of the poom poom. So it removes the manipulation, and your choices in the opposite sex increases. Why? Because one, you're able to see when somebody when somebody doesn't like you. You're able to accept when somebody doesn't like you because the the, the worst thing is is when the when, when they're not showing interest, and because we're so emotionally dumb, we still chase. A, like a big part of emotional intelligence isn't just knowing your emotions. But also, it's being able to tell when somebody likes us or not. I don't know about you, but whenever I see someone who is trying to pursue me and I am not giving them any reciprocation and they're still trying, there is a certain level of respect that I lose for them. It's almost like I don't it's not like I'm being an asshole. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, people who we treat them like shit and yet they still come back. You're like. Like, I thought you were smarter than this. You know, it's, it's, it, and I'm not saying like treating them like shit, like abusing them, you know what I'm saying? But now giving them the, the same energy that they're giving back to us. They respond fast, we respond slow because we're not interested. And there is a certain level of respect that I sense that I lose for them. It's not on purpose. It's, I don't I don't like to feel that. But I just notice like the bars, like in a, like in a video game where people fighting and the more they're dying, the lower it gets. I just feel that. Um, it takes a certain level of me reminding myself that you know what, Alexis, like that that, that that's just your, that's it's just in your brain, but it's almost like your body has an automatic reaction to needed behavior, and maybe that's just me. Okay, maybe I'm just projecting, but if, I like to think that a lot of people think similarly. It's a reaction that we can't help. It's almost like seeing someone who we respect. But then let's just say something bad happens and and there's a fight and rather than they rather than stay with us, they run away. And we're like, we can't help but lose respect for them. We're like, yo, this bitch ass dude ran away from a fight and now he left me stranded. Like it's like you can't humans have that wired in them. People who lack emotional intelligence pursue people who don't want them, who don't care whether or not you're in their lives or not. And so you could imagine how evolutionarily, if you're gonna have a child with a certain person, you don't want someone who can't take a hint. That gene can be passed on to the to your kid. You don't want someone who doesn't who is who wants to be with someone who doesn't want them, because maybe they'll have a kid with them, they'll become single, the the child will be missing a parent, and it'll and we all know that a child without its both of their parents have a lower evolutionary chance of survival. Back in the days, but also in today, a child without two parents lacks a lot of emotional support. We lack a lot of a lot of financial support. There's a higher likelihood that that kid will end up in prison, especially if he doesn't have a dad. So being able to read people well will increase your likelihood of finding a good partner as a man and a woman. But if you are gullible, if you can't read people, you're sabotaging your lineage. So as a result... Since that affects your your decision making when it comes to having a kid, and that it, it since you can't read people, it lowers the likelihood of your child surviving because you're not picking the right mate. Evolutionarily, people are just not going to be attracted to that trait because it's not advantageous. So that's an important thing. The next thing is that you they see you as parent material. Even if a if a woman sees you as a parent, if a woman sees you as a as a, as a dad material. They're gonna what they're gonna consider you more for as a relationship partner. They're a man who seems emotionally cold to the point, who seems emotionally unhinged, where they'll assume, you know what, this person may not be a good dad. And it sounds crazy, right? Because you're like, oh, well, what does being a parent have to do with it? Let me tell you something. Everything about what's attractive comes down to whether or not the whether or not that helps my child. Even being physically good looking, it means whether or not I want those good genes. 
Evolutionary theory suggests that our preferences for attractiveness and sexual desire are shaped by our instincts to ensure the survival and well-being of our offspring. These preferences have been honed over generations to maximize the likelihood of successful reproduction and the survival of our genetic lineage. When it comes to finding a long-term partner, emotional stability is often considered an attractive trait. This is because emotional stability is associated with healthier and more stable relationships, effective communication, and creating a nurturing environment for children. Evolutionarily speaking, individuals who possess emotional stability are more likely to provide a secure and supportive environment for their offspring, increasing their chances of survival and reproductive success. While it may seem as though evolution just gives us likes and dislikes without explanation, it's important to understand that our brain's preferences are shaped by millions of years of evolutionary pressures. Our brains are wired to prioritize traits that have historically been beneficial for offspring survival, such as physical health, fertility, and resource availability. The brain doesn't necessarily know the specific consequences of certain traits, but it guides us towards preferences that have historically increased the likelihood of reproductive success. These preferences act as a guide helping us make choices that align with our evolutionary goals. In terms of unattractiveness, certain traits in individuals may be correlated with reduced fitness from an evolutionary standpoint. For example, traits like poor health, lack of resources, or behavioral patterns that may hinder effective parenting could be perceived as unattractive. These characteristics have been associated with decreased chances of offspring survival and reproductive success throughout our evolutionary history. Right? For women, it's almost like if you're and I and every guy will agree with this. If you're a woman and you have emotional stability, the reason why that's unattractive in a long term partner is because you're going to be fucking crazy. My kid is going to be around your crazy ass. I don't want that shit. I don't want a woman who cannot control herself being the parent, the mom of my kids. So evolutionarily, the men who found those women who didn't want to have kids with those women usually had better offspring and passed on their genes more. So you gotta realize that the traits you wanna acquire are traits that, are, that, that stereotypically look good for a parent. And it doesn't mean to be a bitch where you're one of those you know dads who do everything the woman says, but traits, for example, having a stable income, um, being emotionally strong, being able to defend your woman, fit, being able to physically defend your woman, being willing to walk away, being able to to connect emotionally with people, making fucking eye contact, right? Like dad-like traits. There are some dad-like traits that are attractive. I just don't want you to go so far where you become this guy who was completely pussy whipped and controlled by his woman. That's not what I'm talking about. Any man who possesses this will always be put in leadership roles. I am telling you, if you are able to project emotional intelligence, men will want to follow you. Like it, because your decision making is going to be pristine. And if you lean in that direction, those are the traits you want to have. Having emotional intelligence is at the top of that. Emotional intelligence is widely regarded as one of the most important traits a partner can have when it comes to raising children. It encompasses the ability to understand, manage, and express emotions effectively, as well as empathize with others. When a parent possesses high emotional intelligence, they are equipped to provide the nurturing environment and support that children need for their emotional growth and well-being. Such parents are able to recognize and validate their children's emotions, fostering a sense of understanding and connection. Effective communication skills enable emotionally intelligent parents to build strong relationships with their children, while teaching them how to navigate their own emotions and regulate their behavior. This trait also equips parents to navigate conflicts and problem solving in a healthy manner, modeling positive behaviors for their children to emulate. Ultimately, emotional intelligence lays the foundation for secure attachments, healthy emotional development, and positive outcomes for children as they grow and navigate the world. And the next thing is emotional, emotional stability, emotional intelligence, usually means that you have that you have more friends, you have more power in life and you have a better career. Like nothing predicts success in life more than emotional intelligence. Multiple studies have shown that emotional intelligence predicts success across various domains more strongly than other factors. Here are a few examples. Emotional intelligence, the most potent factor in nursing workforce success. Journal of Nursing Administration. 
This study highlights the importance of emotional intelligence in predicting success among nursing leaders. It emphasizes the ability of emotional intelligence to predict workplace success and its implications for effective leadership. Emotional intelligence predicts success in medical school, the Journal of Applied Psychology. This study examines the predictive power of emotional intelligence on success in medical school, particularly in terms of interpersonal skills and bedside manners. It concludes that emotional intelligence is indeed a strong predictor of success in medical practice. Academic achievement and emotional intelligence predicting the successful transition from high school to university. Frontiers, the interdisciplinary journal of study abroad. This study focuses on the impact of emotional intelligence on the transition from high school to university. It finds that emotional intelligence, as measured by the Emotional Quotient Inventory, EQI, significantly predicts successful academic transitions. These studies, among others, demonstrate the robust relationship between emotional intelligence and success in various fields. Emotional intelligence encompasses skills such as self-awareness, empathy, and effective communication, which play a crucial role in navigating challenges, building relationships, and achieving positive outcomes in personal and professional domains. Or not. That is one of the number one predictors that leads to not having a criminal record, to having a lot of friends, to being likable, to being successful in business. And also it leads to having a higher, a bigger social life. Having a better, having a good social life leads to making better decisions with, with the opposite sex. If you have, if you have emotional intelligence, you usually, it usually means that you have a better career, you have higher status in life, you have more friends and more women find you attractive. Studies have shown that people, emotionally intelligent men go, get more in life. And uh, the more successful you are in life, the more women you get, women find that attractive. They see you as a conscientious man who has a sensitive side, <laughs> right? Oh, women love that sensitive side in a man, right? Because this is the truth, man. Control your emotions. If you learn to control your emotions, everything in your life will get in order. I am telling you, the, having an emotional life, a happy emotional life, is the most important quality you want to you want to develop that i am telling you me as i've gotten older my emotional life has stabilized and that you guys watched it you you've noticed that i'm honestly that i haven't told anyone anything and people are like oh my god father alex looks more calm right like i was a cycle before but it's true i became more at ease with myself and women just naturally gravitated to that it's the same thing if you do it. The opposite sex would just gravitate to you. Honestly, there's there's just there's just nothing more because it just gives you like a there's nothing more attractive in me as a man whenever I see a woman who is emotionally stable. I don't understand what that is, but my God, is that attractive? That is just like like it's it's just a quality that you just want to develop. You want to, and that's why in my course I talk about how the the, the inner form. I'm gonna give you a spoiler. The inner form of charisma that I talk in my course is emanating peace from within. Any, you may not be funny, you may not be interesting, you may not be attractive, but if you have peace in your heart, that will emanate. People will sense your peace and that peace is a form of charisma. Just me being around you calms me down. There's an aura of peace around you. I associate stability with your presence. That's what charisma is and that's accessible to everyone. Only if we find peace from within and you could be you, you could become a, a source of positive emotions for other people and a healing force for everyone else. All right. Anyways, if you guys ever want to work with Father Alex one on one, go to Mind for a Trash. I'm going to be busy from the 23rd to the to, to the third. I'm going on a meditation retreat. So if anybody wants to work with me one on one, purchase, purchase it now, because after Wednesday and from those 10 days, after Wednesday and 10 days on, I'm not gonna be available. I'm gonna have some pre-recorded videos to upload here, but I'm not gonna be accessible. So you gotta work with me now while you guys get the chance, okay? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. From the bottom of my heart, I wish you all the best and be safe. Emotional Mastery is out. This is a this is my, my favorite course that I've created. It took me over three years. This course is everything that I teach, the mindfulness aspect of this channel, the most important aspect is, and if you are needy, if you're somebody who has a an insecure attachment style or an attachment style that sabotages your relationship if you're unable to connect with people 
if you, if you have a lot of anxiety. Because I also was a needy person. I also used to chase people when they used to pull away. If you're always baited into chasing when a guy pulls away and you cannot control that pattern, if your neediness always sabotages you, if you're too hard, emotionally too hard or emotionally too soft, this course is the course for you. If you have a hard time applying the strategies that I teach and you know what you have to do, but for some reason, emotionally you can't, this course is specifically made for that. And the strategies that I've learned over the last five years are in this course. The basic the basic package is a five week course. In each week, you, one, you're gonna be able to join a WhatsApp group where you could contact me and I'll help you out through the course and you can ask me questions and I answer those questions on Zoom or I'll make a video and add it to the course. But the point is this course is specifically geared towards people who feel like they need to master their emotional life. So the basic package, as we can see here, this is all of the things we're gonna learn on this course. And the, we have three packages. One, we have the basic package, which is 199. And the next package, 299, which is the bronze package, where so you get the five week course, you, you get the, uh, the walking meditation, the compassion meditation, the breathing meditation. It, these are long meditation sessions that you guys can listen to. The what's next meditation, Jesus Christ. The teachings of the Buddha, which is pretty much a four week. It's not gonna be four weeks to be honest with you. We, we might extend it. We might make this course longer, like even a few months to be honest with you. But for, but for now, this is the course. Four week series after the course that you get where I will be teaching you guys straight from the from the teachings of the Buddha. It's like Bible class people, because I was a Bible teacher before. Or you get the, 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 the platinum package, where not only do you get all of those bonuses, but also you get a complimentary one-on-one -on -one call with me at half price, along with three bonus meditations on top of all of the ones that you have. The bronze package, $299, and the platinum package at $3.99. So click on the description down below to purchase it right now. And I'll see you guys inside. I swear to God, you, if you do what this course says, neediness out the window. I am so sure you have a 14 day money back guarantee. Because if you don't like the first two classes, people, the first two classes are like I are one of the biggest bangers in terms of like spiritual content that you ever see. I know that for sure. And if you don't like the first two classes, unfortunately, you're not gonna like the rest of the course. I'll give you your money back. No questions asked. Because if you like the first two classes, I, I know for sure everything else in that course is gonna be worth it because they are the same quality and even better. To I can promise you that, ladies and gentlemen. So click on the description down below where it says purchase emotional mastery so that you can start with your first week and you can add yourself to the WhatsApp group and I'll see you guys inside. I'm so excited for you.